Hello, and welcome back to this three-part video series covering Substance Painter's implementation of the Asus CG color space with OCIO. Once again, I'm Michael Wilde, a senior VFX artist, and if you haven't watched the primer in part one, where I covered the basics of color space, I recommend giving that a watch first, as this video will assume you understand those terms. In late 2001, Substance Painter V7.4 added open color IO, which is how we are able to work with the Asus CG color space inside of Painter. OpenColorIO, which I will be abbreviating to OCIO going forward, is an open source system that Substance and other VFX packages use for color management. It requires an OCIO config file, which defines the color universe which you'll be working in, basically defining your color management options. Asus CG is one such config. Because the same setup is used across different programs, whether it's Substance for texturing, Maya for rendering, or Nuke for compositing, it means a unified pipeline from start to finish, and that every step of the way, artists see exactly the same thing. This is incredibly important in VFX. So how do we use OCIO in Substance? When you set up a project in Painter, there's this new option at the bottom called Color Management. Opening that up presents you with a number of settings. If you select Open Color IO as your color management system, you will see we get a drop down asking us which configuration we want to use Substance, Asus 1.0.3, Asus 1.2, or Custom. As you can see, Asus comes pre installed with Painter, but if you want to use another system, you can select Custom and add your own OCIO config file. For this video, we will be using the most up to date version of Asus, Asus 1.2. You will now see it creates some default settings, including making our working color space Asus CG. A working color space is the one in which the background calculations of our scene are worked out in. We're going to leave everything else as default, but before we move on, I want to touch on what these options mean. It may look a little bit complicated at first, but don't worry, let's use our knowledge from the last video to go through it all. To put it really simply, Substance is asking us, when I import or export texture data, how should I interpret that data? Think about it like this. If I have a sentence I want to translate in Google, I need to tell it what language I'm inputting. Knowing that, Google can then correctly interpret the words and turn them into binary in the background and do its calculations. Then, by telling it how I want it to be outputted, it can spit them out correctly in that language. It's all about the correct flow and conversion of data. Computers aren't the smartest after all, and neither are 3D packages. We need to tell it what realm the color data we are inputting exists within, so that it can take all that info and display it correctly. You may be looking at your settings and finding yourself a little bit confused by the terms like Utility Linear sRGB and Utility sRGB Texture. These are called roles and they are defined by our OCIO config file. Roles are basically just shorthand for different types of color space transforms to tell Substance how to interpret or transform the data so that it can do its background calculations correctly. If we go back to our Google Translate metaphor, this is us telling Google which language we are inputting. These are all set by the color spaces config file, and thankfully, we only need to concern ourselves with two or three, so don't feel too overwhelmed by this list. To correctly import references and images, Substance wants to know what color gamut they have and if they have a linear or nonlinear transfer function. 8 bit and 16 bit images that you use to texture with are often sRGB JPEGs and TIFFs from the internet. The utility sRGB texture role is what Substance needs to correctly interpret these sRGB imports with a 2.2 gamma curve. Whereas floating point images like 32 bit EXRs for displacement details or HDRIs to use as lighting environments still have the sRGB gamut but need to be treated as linear. The utility linear sRGB role is what Substance needs to correctly interpret those. For exporting, you will notice the default settings are the same, except with one exception, which we'll talk about later in this video. So I've opened up this fantastic dragon project created by the Substance team at Adobe. Now that we're using Asus in Substance, you will see a couple of new options at the top of your viewport. This is our viewport color management. This is just a display transform that converts the working Asus CG colors to our display color space, which here is sRGB like most computer monitors. We can click the little monitor button to turn it off and on, which as we see makes it all a bit darker as it removes the sRGB gamma curve. There are a lot of options there. So say for example, you knew your display used the Rec 709 color space, you would choose that one instead. You may notice that if you change from viewing your material to just viewing a single channel that isn't your base color, like spec roughness, this gets disabled automatically and you're unable to turn it back on. Why is that? Well, to answer that, I have to explain our final and quite fundamental color space terms, color data and scalar data. 
In texturing, there are two types of data we can paint, colour and scalar data. The easiest way to think about them is colour data is data which you see, whereas scalar data is calculated. Let me explain that in a little bit more detail. In texturing, you have a number of channels which contribute to the shader we add to our object. Those channels will either be seen directly on the mesh or used to drive some attribute of the shader. For example, when we paint our base colour channel, we are defining the colour of parts of the mesh. This is colour data. But our black and white spec roughness map that dictates how shiny or rough parts of our mesh are is never shown directly at render time. It's just calculated to drive the roughness attribute of the shader. This is scalar data. Colour versus scalar data. Actually seen versus calculated. I'll put a list on screen of the common colour and scalar channels. In substance, you can tell if a channel is colour or scalar data by going to your texture set settings. If a channel has three little spheres, it's colour data. If not, it's scalar. You cannot change the default channels, but if you create your own custom channels, you're able to change them by clicking this button here. So why does colour versus scalar data matter for our viewport colour transform? Well, since our scalar data will never be seen at render time, it won't have a colour space applied to it. It's just purely value data to be calculated. Remember how we saw in part one that the sRGB gamma curve means it gives less space for lighter values? Well, rather than display our scalar data values with an sRGB transform scrunching up the data incorrectly, we want to display it linearly. So that's why the display transform is disabled on scalar channels. So now we've got the project configured to work with ASUS, what do we need to know about actually texturing with ASUS? Well, regarding the actual texturing process, not that much really changes. You may notice that the viewport is slightly darker and more contrasted, but that's just the realities of ASUS CG versus sRGB. Substance will also apply a colour space to your colour picker when choosing colours for a colour data channel, but will remove it when picking colours for a scalar data channel, like the normal map for example. The places we need to be careful are when we're importing textures to use to make sure they're handled correctly and come into Painter looking like they should. Well, the settings we chose will give 8 and 16-bit resources the 2.2 gamma curve and floating point images will be interpreted linearly. But what if you're importing lots of different resources and one happens to be different from our project settings? Well, Substance does allow you to change how you interpret resources, but only on a per-use basis. When using a resource in a layer, say for example this fill layer that I've made here, I can click this drop down to see my colour space options. This allows me to make changes to the colour space of any resource used, but only in this one instance, not every time you've used it in your project. Similar to importing textures, let's quickly talk about HDRIs, or as Substance calls them, environments. As another type of resource you can import, they also have colour space options. Often HDRIs you use for your substance environment are linear images within the sRGB colour gamut, but they are floating point images, due to the nature of values going over one in an HDRI map. As we saw in our settings earlier, floating point images will be imported as linear sRGB images. If you need to make a change to the colour space options of your environment map, as it's not displaying correctly, simply click on this option box here and use the drop down to change it. This is useful if, for example, you are handed an HDRI which has already been converted to ASUS CG. I'll go ahead and bring in a custom linear HDRI image from HDRI Haven as a resource and use that to light my scene. As I already discussed, the texturing process is mostly the same once we have our project set up for ASUS. But what about when we want to export our ASUS textures? Well, like imported resources, all of that is handled in the project settings. The only difference between our import and export settings is that floating point images get encoded in the ASUS colour space. This is the default settings as defined by the OCIO config file, and since the floating point data we may be exporting, like our height data as a displacement map, is scalar anyway, exporting in the linear ASUS CG colour space is fine for us. We'll leave everything as it is because these defaults work for us, so why even mention it? Well, because as I hope I've over-explained at this point, colour management is all about the correct handling of data along our pipeline. That means we need to know exactly how we're exporting everything so that when we get into different programs, it can all be handled correctly. But more on that in the next video. Before we finish up here, let's quickly recap the most important points we've covered. OCIO is an open source colour management system which allows different 3D packages to use a matching config file that defines the colour universe we work in. Substance Painter's project configuration UI is where we set ASUS CG up and decide how to interpret different types of incoming and exported data.
The display transform converts the working color space, ASUS CG, into the color space of our monitors. It is disabled for scalar data channels. Color data is texture information which is seen on our shader. Scalar data is texture information which is used as a value to calculate a property of our shader. Great, so join me in part three and we'll take a look at using OCIO in Maya and Blender to render our textures exactly as we see them in Substance Painter. Cheers.